Good morning, everybody. Minister Tom here. And just this week, as a reminder, this is the most holy week in the Christian calendar. This is the week where Jesus Christ gave up his life in order to pay for the sins of man. Let's face it, through history, and it's quite clear, man has been very, very sinful. When the Jews were given the Ten Commandments by Moses, written by God, there were only ten rules in which to follow. They're very, very simple, actually. But for some reason, no culture in history has been able to keep them. During that period of time, the Jewish people made up many, many laws, which made it even more impossible to follow what God wanted them to follow. I'm not here to give them a history lesson, although I could, and I could spend an hour or two hours a day talking to you about what the history of the Old Testament was all about. But I'll say this, and I am going to read from the uh, Bible in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, specifically verse 7. Verse 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Maybe you know what that means. Maybe you don't. So I'll try to give it an explanation. We as Christians believe in Jesus Christ as being the Son of Man. In order to do that, without being able to touch, feel, smell, or use any of your other senses in order to verify that that is so, that even Jesus Christ lived, we as Christians have to have great faith in knowing that every word in the Bible is true, that it, although written by the apostles and some others, was written through the Holy Spirit, through that person, and put on parchment in order to be part of history. It becomes that simple. If you believe in the Bible and everything written in it as being the truth, then you will understand that we do walk by faith, not by sight. We just accept that Jesus Christ lived, that he, hid at, he did have a ministry, that was three and a half years long, and that he did die at 33 and a half. We also look to earlier portions of Christ's life, where at age 13, he preached in the temple in Jerusalem, which was not an easy thing to do since only those priests could preach in the temple. He must have had some very, very good oracle skills and great knowledge. During this most holy week, we remember what Christ did in order to save us from the sins of the world. I suggest that you read the book of John or possibly the book of Matthew, in order to understand all that Christ did during this week, more than 2,000 years ago, in order to save man from himself. Now, if you're Jewish or even Muslim, go back to your holy books. Go back to the Old Testament and read about the great prophets of Isaiah and um, some of the words of, I, I, uh, of Elijah. 
they very clearly say that the Son of Man, the Savior, was coming. And they wrote about it hundreds of years before it actually happened. Maybe early man had a sense that we no longer have. But fortunately, this has all been written down for us in the Bible. Many scholars have gone over all of these works, and although some have differences of opinion, the basis is the same. Christ came. He came to take away the sins of the world so that we could be clean before God. It then became the choice and or the culture of man in society that led us astray from what Christ did for us. Just as a point of history, this week has a great deal of history behind it in the life of Christ. Thursday was the day in which he was seized after having a Passover dinner with the apostles. During that dinner, it became clear that he knew who the apostle was that lost faith and turned his back on the work of Christ. That apostle was Judas. Judas did get paid for ratting out Christ. And he did that for his own reasons. And those have been depicted in several movies, which you can see today. And it has been in several scholarly uh, writings, which again, you can read. So I won't go into it here. The end result for Judas was he realized that the devil used him and that God let it happen. It was always God's plan to bring his son to earth to clean up the sins of the Jews. It wasn't anybody else. It was the Jews. Christ did not come here to form a religion. He did not die a Christian. He died a Jew just as he was born. Well, in his death, his word went out far and wide and later converted the Jewish people who believed in his word, and they were many, as well as the apostles going out to speak to the Gentiles, which then later formed the Christian religion. Friday was the day in which Christ died. He died terribly through lashes, through intimidation, through emasculation. He was nailed to a cross in a way which was extremely, extremely painful. The Romans knew how to kill and do it very, very well. The Romans' way of killing you was by putting you nailed to a cross whereby you would have your back going forward so that it would fill with water and that you would virtually drown to death in your own water. Christ lasted quite some time and it wasn't until a Roman soldier took a spear and speared the side of his body and found the water running, that they actually knew that Christ had passed. Shortly thereafter, it's been documented that there were earthquakes, an eclipse, high winds, and other natural disasters, which God did perform, scaring the heck out of the ancient Israelites and, of course, the Romans, who were the dominant military power of the time. Christ 
body was later taken down and permission was given for him to be buried in Joseph's tomb. While doing so, he was placed in a cloth, which was traditional for the burial of Jews at the time. A heavy rock was put before that tomb, sealed, and was guarded 24 hours a day by Roman soldiers. This was all checked on Saturday to make sure that the seals were in place, the stone, which weighed thousands of pounds, was still there, and of course, that the Roman sentries were still guarding the tomb. The miracle occurred on the following Sunday morning when it was found that the tomb was open. The two soldiers were asleep. Similar things have happened in recent history, but we won't go there. That's a lesson for another day. In entering the tomb, Christ's body was gone. The shroud that was there, later determined to be known as the Shroud of Turin, had an imprint of Christ on it. There's many stories and speculations as to whether or not that was actually Christ. Let's just say for this discussion, it was. And those who have studied it have determined that it was. At any rate, Christ was God. Thus, fulfilling the prophecy by older prophets saying that God brought his son to the world to take away the sins of the world, to purify Israel so that they could live a righteous life and ascend eventually to heaven. Christ stayed around on this earth in spirit form for 40 more days initially to be seen by the remaining apostles. Ten of the remaining uh, apostles did eventually see Christ. It took Thomas a little longer to see him and to believe, but he did. Mary Magdalene saw him. Many other followers and believers did see him. And after the 40 days, he did ascend to heaven and was not seen again. Although other people have said that they have seen Christ, I cannot confirm nor deny whether or not their stories are true. Those stories came under certain circumstances, which I do not fully understand. So I will not go there. If I was to conclude now, I would just simply say this is a very, very holy week for Christians. Usually it's a holy week for Jews as well, as Passover usually coincides with the holy week. This year it doesn't. Easter is early. And that's the differences between the two calendars. What I will say is for you Christians, repent for your sins. Christ is coming back. The signs are here. It may not be today, tomorrow, next month, or this year. But he is coming. And he will destroy the evil. And will have a 1,000-year reign. And that should be something that makes you very happy. I It makes me happy to know that I'm going to be with Christ when my life ends. Once again, friends, I'd like to hear from you as to what you would like for me to speak about. Whether it's religion, life coaching advice, politics, current events, or even simple business, I'd like to know what you have to say. I do privately counsel people on life issues, on business, and as some of you know, I do promote several different companies as I am an affiliate marketer 
and some of you may find those videos interesting while others may not. I do suggest that this week you pick up your Bibles and start to read. Start with John. He's the easiest to understand. From there, you may want to go, say, to Acts, where Luke wrote it, and he did a great deal of research, as his background was a physician. And he spoke to the people who were involved, and he wrote about it. And his account for what had happened is very, very good. His research is impeccable, and his writing style is easy to understand. But please, take the time to read. As always, friends, I ask you to like, follow, and subscribe. Those likes are like gold. It tells the computer algorithms that this is important and that it should be spread far and wide. So again, I please, I urge you, beg you, like the video so that others can get the chance to see it. And friends, even more important, share it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with strangers. Put it up on your wall. That way others will get to see what I am talking about. This is Minister Tom. I say goodbye to you for today, and I will see you soon.